let me give you a little bit of information about the foundation. <laughs> a little information about the foundation. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Sunday Riley the Influencer Foundation and I have the shade 150. I'm currently wearing it on my face right now and I apply it later on in the video. But first I'm going to give you a little bit of information on the product itself and then jump into my review. So if you'd like to hear that just keep on watching. So this foundation is $42, it is 1.08 ounce or 32 milliliters, and it comes in 19 or 20 shades, I believe. Uh, it's hard to tell on Sephora without me sitting here and counting them all. So 19 or 20 shades, it looks like a pretty good range. I have the shade 150 because it has a very strong yellow undertone and that's what I go for. So I probably could have gone with one of the lighter shades but uh, I went with that one. This foundation says it's good for normal, oily, or combination skin, and I have to agree with that because I've had dry patches down here before and it does not sit well on my dry areas of skin. On the rest of my face where it is normal, it looks beautiful and it looks fine, oily, I don't really get oily except for um, my forehead a little bit and I haven't noticed it breaking apart or looking extra shiny where I do get oily, so that is a positive. But like I said, if you have dry skin, I would recommend looking at a different foundation because it does accentuate a lot of dryness, even when I put on oils and heavy skincare beforehand. It also says it's a clean, long-lasting foundation with medium to full coverage. And I have to disagree with that. I don't think it's medium to full. I think it's very light to medium. You can build it up a little bit, but it doesn't really get full, full coverage. I have some redness and some sunspots and freckles, and you'll see when I apply it, that it does cover, it does add a nice veil. But once you smooth it out all over your face, it's not full coverage. I could still see my sunspots and, you know, beauty marks, stuff like that. And occasionally, I have redness peeking through. A little bit about the brand, it's actually a skincare brand which is very highly priced and a lot of people rave about the products. I personally have only tried a couple of their products and sample sizes and I have really liked it so far. I'm not ready to splurge on their skincare so I was excited to get to try this foundation for a fairly reasonable foundation price. It's still a high-end foundation price. It's not anywhere near drugstore, but the brand is cruelty free and I've been trying to head more in that direction, so that's a positive. This is what the packaging looks like. It's a squeezy tube with a pump top, which I really, really love. I love that it's travel friendly. It is not a glass container and I feel like the air doesn't get to it and it won't change the formula very fast. So it does say it will last for 12 months. Like I said, I have the shade 150. It is a tad bit too dark for me, but come summertime, I feel like it'll work perfectly. Now, my thoughts on this foundation. I feel like it is very sheer. The way I like to apply it normally is I'll go in with my skincare and I'll moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. I'll add oil sometime to extra dry spots, which tend to be here, a little bit around my nose sometimes, and under my eyes. I go in without a primer and I use my hands and I feel like that gives me the best coverage, the best look to my skin. With a beauty blender or makeup sponge, it does sheer it out a tad bit more. So if you're trying to build it up and use it to its maximum medium coverage capacity, I would recommend maybe a brush or your fingers. But to me, I usually find that brushes just kind of smear foundation around and leave it streaky. This does have a lot of silicones in it, so it should blur, blur? <laughs> it should blur the appearance of your pores and smooth over your face nicely. It is a medium thickness. It's not super runny, but it's also not very thick, so it's easy to spread around your face. Today I tried it with different primers. On this side of my face I used a redness correcting primer and on this side I used my normal hydrating primer that I use with other foundations and to me I don't really see a difference. 
I feel like both sides acted the same with the primer. The only thing I find that it's not sticking to my nose or this area. My dry spots are actually not terrible today. In another video I did, I was testing this foundation and my dry spots looked horrendous. So, like I said, if you have dry skin, stay away. Also, I feel like it lasts very well throughout the day. I don't tend to look shiny or oily and it doesn't break apart weird except in my dry spots. And for some reason, it just doesn't want to stick to <laughs> this area under my nose today. Overall, I like the way this foundation looks. I usually use the NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer and that tends to get very oily and shiny throughout the day. This, I feel, controls the oils a little bit better and once again, I don't really get that oily. So if you do have oily skin and you've tried this, let me know how it works for you. I like how it adds just a veil of coverage. It's kind of like a skin perfecter with a little bit more of a tint. I tend to go for the lighter to medium coverage foundations. If you like full coverage, you know, blanking out canvas of your face, this is not going to do it for you. But I would still go to Sephora, ask for a sample. Also just to see what color you would be because I feel like the color range is a little weird. The undertones are varying, so you might have to get a shade darker or lighter depending on what undertone you want. So I would say give this a shot and if you have, let me know how you like it. If you'd like to see me applying it, just keep on watching. Today, for the sake of this video, I'm going to apply different primers to different parts sides of my face. So first I'm going to start with the e.l.f. Prep and Hydrate Balm. I've been using this under my eyes, not under makeup, so I want to try it under makeup and I really like the way this feels. Oh, I'm going to see how it mixes with concealer because normally what I do is uh, put like an oil or something down. Now that I have that under there, I'm going to go in with the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer in Redness Correcting Primer because I am pretty red around my mouth, chin area, so I'm only going to do it to this side of my face in the areas of redness. So right around here, maybe a little bit on my nose and chin, just because I want to see how this reacts with the foundation on top. Because like I said, I've been liking it without any primer, so we'll see how this works. On this side of my face, I'm going to go in with the Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. I usually use this under all my foundations. So I'm going to test it out under this one because it's very hydrating. It smells like coconuts and it's not too heavy. It's not silicone-y, so I like it. And because I have dark circles, I'm going to go in with the Erase Paste by Benefit and just kind of dot this under my eyes here. This is what I normally do, and when I don't do this, I see darkness and it drives me nuts. <laughs> now let's go in. The way I like to apply this is with my fingers, just straight up smooth it all over my face. So I'm going to go in with my fingers today so I don't alter my results of the primer and I'm in the shade 150 right now. I think it's a tad bit too dark for me but I make it work. I wanted it because it has yellow under... <laughs> I wanted it because it has yellow undertones and I like yellow undertones better. So I just kind of dot this everywhere focusing in the center of my face. Really just kind of patting and smushing is my best way to describe this. <laughs> pat smush, pat smush. And then work it out towards the rest of my face. And I'll bring a little bit up here. And there we go. So what I noticed with both of the primers right off the bat is that it didn't really stick to right here and here and like a little bit around my nose so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more on my fingers and see if I could add it to those areas like tiny 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 I'm 
just going to add the tiniest bit more on my cheeks and see if it builds with the primers. And a little bit up here, because I didn't get much up here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so a couple things I've noticed. My nose is really looking funky. It's got some weird splotchiness going on, like my redness is really popping out, and it looks like I have dry skin in weird, whatever this is, weird things going on right now, and it's not sticking to here or here, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's the primer or my face is just like, nah, foundation, not today. I feel like this area looks really nice, it looks smooth, it looks pretty even, it might be a little uh, splotchy and not very well blended because I use my fingers. I'm sure with a beauty blender or a brush you might have different results. But this is just, you know, one, one and a half layers of the foundation all over my face. Hopefully the camera's focusing on the this weirdness going on with my... Uh, foundation kind of like looking funky and dry and splotchy and weird patches of missing foundation and redness popping through. Usually I'm dry here and you can see it's starting to look a little dry and whatnot. Before I powder my face I'm going to add some concealer. I'm going to use the Too Faced Born This Way concealer just because I used Too Faced eyeshadow today and I want to keep it going. Let's see if this will cover the redness on my nose on top. I've never actually done this before, so <laughs> bear with me. And I'm just going to blend it out with my finger because that's what I was doing today, apparently. I am, like, really awesome at picking concealers for my face. No, no I'm not. It's a little bright. <laughs> and let's just pat this on on top to try and cover my redness and reverse Rudolph nose here. That definitely covered some of my redness. And I'm going to be trying out this Winky Lux Diamond Powder. I got it in my Ipsy bag. It's in the shade Light. Like I said, I'm very dry under there, so anything that sucks out the moisture is a no-go for me and that seems to be almost every powder I try under my eyes so this has been okay obviously my foundation's not really matching my skin today but what else is new and then I've been really loving this hourglass ambient lighting palette oh my gosh is it stupid expensive but you know what I'm getting old and certain powders don't really look right on my face anymore so I'm just going to kind of swirl in the first two shades and go over my the tops of my cheeks with it and my forehead and on the center of my face. And then with the darker shade here on the end, I'm just going to lightly go over the bottom of my face. So let's take a look now that I'm all powdered. It just seemed to make it a little bit more matte. Nothing's really accentuated, I mean dryness wise. So I'm going to go in with the rest of my makeup and then I'll give you my thoughts on this foundation. So I've been wearing this foundation for a little over three hours now and not much has changed. I don't know how it's going to come off on camera but it does have a little bit of a glow to it. It's not shiny or oily in person. It's just natural and radiant and glowy is the best way I could describe it. So not much has changed. My dry spots haven't uh, creased or caked or anything. The foundation's still missing from there. It didn't magically reappear or anything. And the dry spots on my nose still look the same. It hasn't gotten worse and it definitely hasn't gotten better. But for now, let's take a closer look. So as you can see, my skin pretty much looks the same. This right here is highlighter, so it's not the foundation looking glowy or dewy. It does look a little glowy up here. I haven't blotted or anything or touched it or powdered. One thing I do want to mention is that it almost looks like it's missing from right here. 
and here. That could be because I didn't spread it all the way to the back of my cheeks when I applied it, or it just kind of disappeared. I don't usually sit like this or touch my face, so either I didn't apply it very well there to begin with, or it faded, but it doesn't look patchy or weird faded. It just looks like it's kind of not there. So that's one thing to note. It looks ever so slightly cakey around here and here, but I tried building it up in those areas and I was having problems when I first applied it. So I would probably try and like tap it out or fix it normally, but I'm just gonna keep it on and see what it does. So that's it for my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If I it helpful, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, as always, just leave it down below. And I'd love to hear from you. So if you'd like to see this eye tutorial, I actually filmed that. done. And thanks for joining me and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye!